their own way and focus on, on the job. Was, was today a bit of a, an inevitable sort of drop in concentration? Uh, well, we didn't play well in the first half, and the Giants played very well in the first half. Um, I think you'd probably be taking away from them a little bit if you, if you went down that path. Um, you know, we, we came into the game understanding they had excellent speed, excellent skill, um, and if we didn't win enough of the contest and defend well in our forward half, that um, they'd get out the back of us and, and be able to use the ball well, and it played out that way. Um, we just had to get the game back uh, the way we wanted it and have to um, <clears throat> and get our players defending rather than just running past the, the, the contest too much. So once we're able to do that, I think um, we're able to get the game back the way we wanted rather than you know, emotion coming into it, which is, I think, where everyone wants to go this year with, you know, with our team. Mm. So was but there any emotion for you at half-time to get them back on the track? Or uh, I, I think quarter-time we're a little bit more disappointed, but half-time was really about <clears throat> going back to right, how do we want to play the game and, and going through more a structured process of this is what this is how we want the game to look, this is what we want to do, rather than any sort of um, emotion at halftime. It was very, I don't know, better ask Stu, I was the one doing the talking, he was listening, but um, it was more about you know, playing the game the way we want to play and giving them a solution to, to, to um, stop the Giants running away from us. James, you came down to the bench about 20 minute mark in that first quarter. Were you, and Bomber was particularly animated at quarter time, mm. was that the bit where you wanted to get down and make a point really quickly? Yeah, it was. We, I mean, the first quarter we didn't win the, win the contested ball. We we're getting beaten around the stoppages, and we weren't defending. And I think our appetite for the game early on um, wasn't as it should have been. Um, and the Giants took advantage of that. Do you almost accept, in some way, that uh, maybe the attitude can't be a fever pitch for say an Anzac Day game and replicate it in a game? Like this, as much as you'd like to replicate it, is there almost an allowance there? I certainly don't want an allowance, um, but yeah, I think the, the the big day of Anzac Day is obviously um, you know provides that sense of emotion, that uplift you get, and and when you're playing uh, in not as big a game, it, you know the players have got to build themselves up. Um, we also you know, we gave them a pretty hard session Tuesday and Thursday too so we've, we've done a lot of work in the last 10 days to sort of keep our fitness levels up so that may have had something to do with that I thought we were really sluggish at the start of the game and for the half and that enabled that didn't help our structure the way we wanted to play either. Did you feel that out there? Did you feel in the lead up to the game that there was a little bit of a flat feeling going in? Or? No I think we prepared well like we prepared like any other game and uh, it just didn't happen go our way at, at the start and uh, you know we were able to come in at half time and change that and Herdy spoke about it and you know to our credit I think we played really well and we played the football that we'd practiced all summer so I think our guys you know we did well in the end. You mentioned appetite for the game change, is that still something that, that a good side can attract that a good side can fall into against a developing side that it's just not there for whatever reason even though you tell yourself? Well, yeah I think it's as a player you know over your career you, you, you think you turn up every day to play and train with 100% appetite, but as soon as you're off a little bit or you or you don't have that appetite, um, it changes. And you know whether it be the team, whether it be a player, uh, that appetite for absolute professionalism and, and competitive instinct and has to be there all the time. And you know this year um, we, we had a bit of a, I suppose today wasn't our best game. Um, last year we had plenty of days like that. The year before we had plenty of days like that. That happens in your in your career. Um, you know, the good part about it was we we've come away. We've won by 39 points. Um, we turned the game around that wasn't going well for us. Um, whereas last year we weren't able to do that. I didn't think that we could turn games around. And the Melbourne game was a, a classic for that last year. Um, but this year wasn't going our way. Turned it around, and, and that's a credit to the players. Did you get a feeling that Goddard goal uh, four or five minutes into the third quarter was almost the flick of the switch that got the players going? Yeah, look, a goal certainly help, I think, with your momentum and the scoreboard the scoreboard pressure you get. I thought that when they, I think they hit the first one after half time and, you know, it was a bit flat again in the box and, and out in the ground. But, yeah, the, uh, the Goddard goal, then Heath Hocking coming on just with his intensity around the ball, um, around the contest, really helped. And you know, we're missing today, um, in terms of Heppel and Hocking, two of our best defensive midfielders and guys that have appetite to defend, and um, I think that showed early on in the game. Sheets, Sheets said that uh, he thought they should have been mixed for a couple of goals up at half time, and his words, he reckons you guys were tonguing it at that stage. Is that a fair summation? Uh, 
don't know. What, what did we kick? Three goals eight or three goals nine? So, you know, like Sheeds, um, that's Sheeds' view. Maybe we, if we had a kick straight and kicked eight goals three, it might have been a bit different. So, um, yeah, I thought we got better as the game went on. Are there likely to be repercussions for guys today in the performance, particularly in the first two and a bit quarters, considering we've got so many blokes potentially to come back from next week? Um, we'll, we'll pick the best side available that we think can compete against Geelong. Uh, repercussions is a, is a hard word. I mean, that's um, the, the fact of the matter is that we've got a, a really good squad. Um, it's a really fit squad. Um, we, I, I'm not sure how the reserves went in terms of injuries today. Um, if we've got one or two injuries on our list, that would be all we've got. Um, we've got guys playing good football. So um, we'll have a challenge to pick a team and there'll be some guys who'll miss out and be unlucky, but you know, we'll assess that as the week goes on. Do you know the certainties are to return at this stage, James? Well, I know the certainties will be available. Uh, yep. Heppel, Carlisle, Hurley, um, Ryder, Fletcher and Winderlich. Um So they're, they're all available. Um, whether they all play is a, a matter for, you know, our, our talls seem to be playing very well at the moment, and you know Scotty Gumbelin, I think kicked another three, Stewie kicked another four. Um, you know I thought Carl Hooker's game was exceptional again. Um, Tate Pears came into the game, started a bit slow, but came into the game. So you know we um, we certainly have a challenge there picking that team. What's the situation with Stanton? Um, came back on the ground before you something Yeah, uh, he's got a tight groin. Um, he got. He, he kicked across his body, someone landed on him. Um, they think it's a, a knock, but we'll go and have scans in the next 24 hours and find out. We're, we're very hopeful that he'll um, he'll play. Um, but if he's not right, well, well, we'll give him a week's rest. What was the sort of scenario with him going back on and then coming off? Did he aggravate it or was he just checking it out? No, the, the, he heard it. And he got landed on, sorry, in the first quarter. And the doctors and the physios were confident he hadn't strained it. So we we're happy to leave him out there. But he just wasn't free to run at more than 95%. And, um, we just thought that the best thing to do was get a fresh player on there. James, apologies for taking attention away from the game, but were you surprised by Shane Charter's um, revelations this morning that he supplied Dan Quiff um, enough of the band, um, the most in beta four, to supply a whole team every week um, in 2012? I haven't read the paper. I'm not sure of those. What did you say they were? The claims? Most in beta four, so it's the band. Oh, I'm not. I'm not here to comment on on anything that's happening outside of football at the moment. Yeah. Do you think that's distracting the players at all? The relentless attention. Um, well, we're six and zero. Oh. Um, Essendon Football Club's only been six and zero oh once um, in the last twenty years that I know of, thirty years that I know of. So I'd say they'd be a little bit distracted, obviously, but um, the football they're playing is is very impressive. So they're handling that that stress and that pressure very well. Let's uh, get the uh, topic back on football, please, guys. James, uh, the pushing rule today, they seem to be really clamping down on that interpretation of pushing the backs and things. Yeah. What, what was your impression of it? And do you think it's, it's almost like changing the game in a, in a poor way? Or? I didn't think we handled that rule as well as we possibly had. Um, I thought, uh, particularly in Adelaide round one, we actually handled that pushing the back rule well and we were able to adapt to it well. But um, today I thought we were a little bit clumsy in the way we, we approached um, tackles or guys on the ground. And um, the umpires have made it very clear that any force into the back is going to be a free kick. So I'm not sure if it's changed the game, but we all know that that rule is, is there. And um, as long as they keep paying it consistently, I think everyone will be OK with it. James, this week's interview is going to take the focus to another how do you manage that with such a big game? Yeah, look, I think that the, the players, um, as I said, have done a great job focusing on, on football. Um, they're a very tight group. They've been looking after each other, um, spending a lot of time with each other, as, as we all have. And I think that um, we'll continue to do that. It's, it's another step towards finishing or ending this process, which we're all you know, obviously very keen to get to the end of. I know you guys want some answers. I know we want some answers. And, and we want to be able to you know, finish it. But we've got to go through the process. and. Um, we're hoping that finishes sooner rather than later. Scott Gumbledon is getting some continuity yeah. in his point. Uh, looks dangerous. How, how do you feel with his track? Oh, very well. Yeah, I thought Scotty, like a lot of our team, started slowly today. But you know, by the end of the game, I think late in the first quarter, early in the second quarter, he started going for his marks again, leading at the ball, um, challenging in the air. And a lot of them are now sticking. Um, and when we started to move the ball properly, we gave both Scotty and Stu uh, an opportunity to take the mark. So you know, um, Scott's ability to come back from two back operations, um, chronic hamstrings, uh, 
and other issues and play the football he's playing is outstanding. Do you think he's finally uh, found the, the secret to it or is he too early to say that? Oh, to his body or to... to his body. Yeah, we always knew he was a good footballer. Um, but I, I think he's starting to manage his, his body. And, and that may mean he has a week off time to time, um, like we did with Jason Windelick uh, this week. But when you've got a healthy, fit squad, you can afford to, to plan and, and prepare properly. And, and that's benefited Scott. The, the captain didn't have you know, one of his better days. Uh, as a footy fan and watcher, how, how do you view it when you see a kid in his second year standing a Brownlow medalist and smacking him in the chest, pushing him and getting in his face and really yeah, look, I think it's part of football. I think that, you know, when, when Joe was a second-year player, he was trying to get up the rung, and, and that, that's happened to him today. But, um, you know, I think that's why we love football, because it's competition and, and you get a chance to, to prove yourself against the, the best. And, um, you know, Joe's the best there is at the moment. Um, there's no one better. So, you know, Joe's had an outstanding year as well. So, you know, he was a, a little bit down today, but that's that, that's football. Stuart, just on Scott Gambleton, What's he like to play with in the forward line? What difference does he bring to you as a teammate? Yeah, well, uh, obviously Scott's a great asset down the forward line. He's a you know huge target down there. And uh, when Hurley went down, and he he was able to come into the side as well. And I went down, and then I was able to come back in. And um, I think the depth in the in the team now is uh, really really good with that way because uh, you know we're finding that if someone goes down, we can replace them. Uh, you know, really easily. So uh, Scotty's doing well and his body's holding up. So it's a credit to him and you know the work he's done for the preseason. Can we replace you, Stu? Oh, hope not. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. James, yesterday there was a story in the paper talking about residual effects and things like that, that might help him along this season. Does that sort of speculation annoy you, particularly with none of the findings of any investigations or uh, I think David Evans said it better than anyone else in his his, his president's address today that um, you know he commented on that and it's too hard for me to comment on one thing and not another thing. So I'd rather just say, start investigations going on, ask me about football, I'll talk about it, but the rest of it um, I can't control what other people think or we can't. And we are we are really looking forward to the time this finishes and we can talk. James, last one, guys. Obviously, huge game against Geelong. You'll get an even better measure of where you are as a team after this, this weekend, uh, next weekend? Yeah, well, look, Geelong are playing, uh, probably they are playing better than anyone else in the competition at the moment. Um, their ball movement, their ability to win the ball, use their numbers, find freeze, um, defend is, has been outstanding. Uh, we, I enjoy watching them play, um, not necessarily play against them, but uh, they're, they're the benchmark in, in, in my opinion. Um, and we've got a game in six days against them, so um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a great challenge again for us and, and we really look forward to Friday night out here against the Cats. Thanks guys.